Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Deborah Lynn Belcanto. Um, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the videos if you like them, just because it helps with the whole YouTube process. And now that I'm actively trying to get this work out there, it'll help overall for me as well. So yesterday we worked a little bit with the pharyngeal mechanism and this is what we call the point of suspension. Let's just do that little breathing exercise real quick. Release the breath. Thinking ah and inhale gently. And we come to that point where we feel the mechanism pull into position inside the mouth. It's the same point where the air actually pauses on that intake. It's like everything sort of stops. Breathing in again. Right there. So on the magic head, one of the things that I, I, I indicate is that, that that pharyngeal piece, the piece where your vowels are all being shaped, the cool part of you inside your mouth, right? That wall that's shape-shifting every time you articulate, when it's pulled into an optimum position, it does a couple really cool things for us as singers. It also helps us when we speak as well, but really for singing, this is one of the things that stabilizes us in a way that we can help get those vocal folds to behave themselves. So exhaling again, thinking on inhale. I want you to notice something, hold still for a second. You feel a little tiny tug like you're holding something back. Release. Try it again. Breathing in again. Suspend. You feel like there's that little tiny tug. That's right. Okay, release. So that tug is sort of like holding something back. And in fact, you are. It's doing something really cool for us. It is causing what we call the reinforcement of gentle subglottal air pressure. That sounds really sexy, doesn't it? So it's like, okay, why, why is that important? Okay, so try it again for me, breathing in gently. Suspending that back wall. That's all you're doing is focusing on just giving that suspension a bit of stability. It's holding back. Okay, so what, what it's doing at that moment is it, as you focus on that stability inside your mouth, it's actually helping the vocal folds do something that we call vocal fold approximation or vocal fold closure. And by reinforcing that sensation, what we're ultimately gonna do is help our vocal folds do their job for us. So today what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about them and help you sort of understand them inside your body, okay? And then we'll come back to more about that pharyngeal wall. So, if I were to ask you what the primary purpose of your vocal folds is, what would you say? Now, most of us will respond to make tone, to speak, to sing, uh, to create a vibration of sound. And I will often say, well, what if that's not the most important physiological purpose to them being in your body? And folks will go, oh, I don't know, what else would they do? So think for a second as to when would be the only time you would ever hold your breath. And most of us will respond when we are underwater. Now, for me, the primary physiological purpose of the vocal folds in your body is to save your life. Now, this becomes really important in singing because when we're singing, are the vocal folds open or closed? Now, we'll get all the answers. We'll get they're open, we'll get they're closed, and we'll get they're both, okay? So what you wanna remember is that Yes, but when they're completely open, you actually do not get a sustained tone. So if you think about someone like Adele, who's had some challenges with her career, right? She had to sort of pause it a couple of times based on the development of what we call vocal nodules. Now, nodules are essentially a callus, uh, an area, a raised area on a fold that ultimately pushes the op opposing side away, right? And in the case of certain people, they actually develop multiple ones, which means various points points on the folds are actually pushing each other and creating little gaps. Now these gaps are problematic, right? Because if you listen to someone that has nodules as they're trying to sing, oftentimes either certain notes won't phonate properly, you won't actually hear a note, 
or you'll get a really breathy quality to the sound. You'll get a sense of raspiness or rattling in the sound. The mechanism is basically having difficulty coordinating. So vocal fold approximation is something that's kind of a, it's not widely discussed in, in the singing methodology, but ultimately it is the source of everything, all right? That our tone source that's located here in the, in the vocal folds, located in that laryngeal cage, that, uh, the laryngeal mechanism, right? It, they're very well protected, by the way. These little folds in a woman are about a half an inch long and a fingernail's width wide. I mean, that's the, that's how tiny they are. In a guy, they might be three quarters of an inch long and a fingernail's width wide, all right? So these aren't very large structures, and most of us are used to pushing a fair amount of air pressure through them. So in bel canto, what we're aware of is that we're trying to sustain their approximation, their side-by-side -side connection all the time when we're singing, not just occasionally on certain notes, but every note that we sing. So what we're gonna do today is just, what does that feel like? How do I feel my vocal folds close? Well, it's gonna be sort of a trick thing because the reality is you can't feel them. But I'm gonna show you what it feels like to sense them being in position. So exhale for me gently. And now just inhale for me gently. and release. And try that again, breathing in gently, suspend. Right now, remember, you feel the room inside your mouth is open, the throat is free and open, and there's space inside your lungs like a little mini cello has just opened up. Try that again. Now here's the freaky part. Everything feels open. We feel like we're completely open space, but something is closed and that is your vocal folds. So as soon as you open and feel the air stop moving, your vocal folds have gone back to what is their natural position, which is closed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a little uh, question and I want you to just answer however you answer, all right? So I'm gonna say, you know, how is your day going today? And most of us will have various things, but let me say, how is your day going? and you respond to the computer and you tell me, hopefully it's going well, I know it's a difficult time. So you notice that you didn't take a breath before you answered me when you speak. This becomes important for us to understand. Our vocal folds in a state of rest are always used to maintaining their closure. Think about us when we are out in the world breathing we do something called involuntary breathing, right? We equalize pressure. Are we aware of breathing when we're walking around in the world? Not usually, unless we're exerting ourselves or exercising somehow. So this neutralization or this approximation of the folds, getting them into position to phonate, to make a tone, to be able to speak or sing, is something they're basically always ready for. So as we dig in a little deeper, we're gonna discover that part of what's happening when we go to sing is that we're all oftentimes pulling in too much air and forcing that air through them, causing them to push apart, causing them to not be approximated, not be prepared to actually make an accurate tone. So essentially our own air pressure is the problem. So tomorrow we'll dig into another layer of this. All right, in the meantime, just play around. Breathing in gently, hold still, sing a little ditty, take a breath, hold still, sing a little ditty, and try to keep your breathing inaudible. Take in the breath in a silent way. And what you'll notice is that it's a much more natural feeling of expansion, a much more natural feeling of opening up the body. So I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Feel free to comment in the box, ask your questions below. I'm happy to respond to them and uh, subscribe and like the video. We'll see you again soon. Ciao bella.